Zelos are about to launch a brand new chronograph. It's very nice, but it's not cheap and it's right around Christmas. Kids have got enough toys already though, eh? Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. Brand new model, premium price tag, Christmas launch date. When El Shan got in touch with me about this, the brand new Zelos Starfighter a couple of weeks ago, I did question the logic of launching a premium Zelos so close to Christmas. But the more I think about it, the more I think it probably doesn't matter at all. This isn't a $400, $450 Mako or Swordfish, and I don't think it's going to move in the big numbers that those two models undoubtedly do. I don't think it's supposed to. The two different colour versions they sent me, one of them is a limited run of 75, the other is a limited run of 50, which is probably just as well because price tags of $13.95 to $15.95, depending on the dial material, it's probably not going to move in big numbers anyway. I think the Starfighter is for a different type of Zelos collector. I think it's for the person who buys pretty much everything from their model range and who isn't going to be bothered about spending nearly $1,500 on themselves over the Christmas period. Zelos have proven on more than one occasion they're more than capable of pitching way into the thousands. Think Sky Raider, think Mirage for good examples of that. Now you saw the pop-up I'm sure. This video is sponsored by Zelos. The question today then is, is it the perfect Christmas present to oneself or should this one be left underneath the tree? Let's flip the camera and find out. All right, so let's start with a word to Zelos new packaging. Look at that, a lovely and slim aluminium case. If you're a Zelos collector, your house is probably full of those old school thick wooden boxes and a few of the, the half height slim wooden boxes. This is going to potentially rock your world because you can store three of your favorite Zelos in there. Now, as you can see here, they sent me two to have a look at, one Spitfire and one blue dial. I think we should start by talking about the different dial colors because they do have a big bearing on the watch overall and they also have a bearing on the price. For example, the Frost dial, which is fully loomed, by the way, looks fabulous after dark. That one comes in at 1399, as does the blue dial. If you look at the blue dial after dark, you can see those two sub registers the the sub dials at three and nine are also fully loomed very interesting as is the bezel insert on both of those versions next up is the adventuring that's a hundred dollars more that comes in at 1499 also has a fully loomed bezel insert the meteorite is also 1499 but if you notice it's dual meteorite those sub registers actually have blue meteorite as opposed to the gray meteorite of the dial that one has a steel bezel insert which isn't loomed similarly the spitfire version which is the one that I am going to concentrate on today also has a steel bezel insert so no loom there but plenty I promise you on the dial and hands and why Starfighter? Sadly, it is not a reference to the 1980s sci-fi movie that I used for the thumbnail. It is in fact a reference to this Lockheed F-104 Starfighter jet, which was cutting edge technology back in the 1950s. In fact, I think there's a little bit of a 50s theme running through this watch, though the reference I would choose is a 50s flying saucer. I think when I show you the side profile, you're going to see exactly what I mean. The watch actually looks quite a lot like the flying saucers from the Mars Attack movies. Yeah, so definitely a retro theme, an aviation theme, and a space theme running through this one today. I think the looks are going to polarize, especially when I put this one on wrist. But then again, it's a Zelos, and the looks pretty much always polarize, don't they? Interesting set of dimensions. It's a 41 mil in diameter, but it actually looks a little smaller than that because it's quite a thick bezel. 13 mil thick, bang on. There is that spaceship side profile. Check that out. Do you see what I mean? 50s flying saucer or what? Those pronounced vintage style lugs almost look like the landing gear of a flying saucer. Similarly, if you look at the thing from the other side profile, yeah, very, very interesting. So 13 mil thick, but two mil of that is from the top hat sapphire crystal. 48 lug to lug, however, it's almost like an integrated bracelet, this one. It is quick release, I'll show you on the, I'll show you the blue one on a leather strap on my wrist a bit later on. 
almost like an integrated bracelet, effectively a lug to lug of about 53, but with a really pronounced downturn. So it doesn't quite wear like a 53, but it doesn't quite wear like a 48 either. Now I have got a seven inch wrist sized up for me. This one weighs in at 145 grams. All stainless steel case and bracelet construction, though there is a hardness coating on here, taking it all the way up to 1200 on the thicker scale, meaning you're not gonna scratch and scuff this one nearly as readily as you would an untreated piece of steel which is good because the standard finish on the case and the bracelet is fantastic. You've got a circular brush on the bezel insert, high polish on the edge of the bezel, mostly brush surfaces to the case, though there is a high polish, very aggressive kind of chamfer edge to those angled downturn lugs, the flying saucers legs that I showed you earlier on. Nice little circular effect to the end of those two chrono pushers. The crown on this one reminds me of the Sky Raider. It's got that kind of serrated edge, easy to grip and super smooth. Kind of a few nods to the Sky Raider. There's the triangle and double dot, that kind of old Flieger style as well. And we haven't even started talking about the bracelet. Now it is quite a slab sided effect because it's 22 mil rather than 20. I'll come back to that later on but check the mixture of brushed and polished surfaces there. And the links are very slim and very small, so the bracelet is nice and comfortable in operation. Screw links, one mil screwdriver is suggested for those. I told you the bracelet was quick release earlier on, and the clasp has an on the fly adjustment here too. Now the clasp upper is milled, the lower is milled, it has double security pushers. And if you flip it to the underside, if I push that, you can adjust it all the way out. There's not quite a centimeter, but not far off. And you can kind of ratchet that one back in. One, two, three, four different positions. I'll come back to the clasp a bit later though. Stainless steel and sapphire display case back. Screw on, but only 50 meters of water resistance. This one has a push-pull crown and the two chrono pushers aren't screwed down either. 50 meters means you're less inclined to jump into a swimming pool with this one. I wouldn't recommend it, but it will handle the odd shower or two. And by that, I mean rain shower, by the way. I wouldn't be taking this one in with you while you wash your body every day. Not recommended. The usual spec sheet is engraved around the outer edge there with the model number, the 316L stainless steel, 50 meters and sapphire crystal, etc. Also, I mentioned that these were small batches. This one, number two of 50. Now, behind that sapphire display case, you can see an ETA 2894-2 with custom rotor. No decoration on the movement, but it doesn't really need it. That rotor is fantastic. Again, I think it goes with that kind of spacey aviation theme and makes the display case back truly worthwhile. Now these Starfighters feature an elaborate grade movement, which is where some of your 14 to $1,600 has gone for sure. Those are adjusted to three positions at the factory, plus or minus seven seconds a day with a maximum daily variance of plus or minus 20 seconds per day. This one, as you can see, coming in pretty much spot on. Looking nice and healthy. 37 joule hacking and hand winding bi-directional wind from that lovely custom rotor, 42 hour power reserve and high beat rate 28,800 vibrations per hour. So now that we've seen how it performs on the time grapher, very nicely, thank you very much. I suppose I better show you the operation. Dual register layout, we have got a permanently ticking small second hand at the three and a 30 minute chrono timer at the nine with a date complication down there at the six. Two pushers, top pusher to start the chrono, top pusher to stop, bottom pusher to reset, very snappy, very tactile, very satisfying. If you start it, it will just keep spinning endlessly, doing 30 minute laps. So let's get these two outside under the macro lens and have a look at both the similarities and the differences between the two different color variants that I have here anyway. I've already discussed the difference in materials of the bezel insert. Uh, one is steel, no loom, one is ceramic with loom. There's also a difference you'll note, I'm sure, in the hands. The Spitfire version on the right has kind of gunmetal colored hands and indices, whereas the blue dial version is more notably silver. It just helps tonally, I think, with the Spitfire version. Also helps with a little bit of contrast from the hands as well there, I think. Now, one small but subtle difference, the date complication down there at the six o'clock has a beveled edge on the guilloche on the blue. It's just raw cut on the Spitfire dial. No beveling, no surround, nothing like that at all. 
Both watches feature the Zelos logo above the pinion in either silver or gunmetal depending and both of them feature the name the Starfighter in red script beneath the pinion. That red picking out the red tip to the chrono hand. Now this is actually my first encounter with the Spitfire dial and I must say I really quite like it. It's kind of like meteorite but slightly less in your face and obviously more earthbound than spacebound. Individual, obviously these are all unique. They're made from the wing of a Spitfire and they're kind of brushed off to give a clean look, but they're still full of imperfections. So you get those unique patterns that you get from a meteorite dial, but it's not quite as noticeable. I think it's far more subtle. It almost looks like a slice of rock in some respects, but without the extreme striations you get from meteorite. Tonally, I think this Spitfire one looks fantastic. I love the gray. I love the black sub dials. Even that little bit of red just sets the whole thing off nicely. And I'm very happy that they went with the stainless steel insert here. I don't think a ceramic one would have worked as nicely. Plus the stainless steel helps to emphasize the integration between the case in the bracelet. That's not to say, of course, that the blue one doesn't look good because it does look good. It's that guilloche whirlpool, slightly organic pattern, slightly irregular, all those little fronds running from the center to the outer edges of the dial. Plus there is a fumé grading, lighter in the middle and darker on the edges as well. Plenty of contrast from those two fully loomed sub registers at the three and the nine. Train tracks around the outer edges of both of those. Again, there's a slightly retro feel to these watches matching the, the Flieger track angle and double dots at the 12. And there we are, there's a side-by-side -side comparison of the loom from both of these watches. Slightly different approaches, but both of them absolutely fantastic. No problems at all getting a, a nice read from these ones at the end of the 20 minutes. The ceramic bezel insert on the blue dial is the first thing to fade, as you would expect. No such fading from the hands. Very, very strong result from both of these. They would be a contender in loom wars. That's how good the loom is, I reckon. All right, you've waited long enough. You've waited patiently. Let's have a look at this thing on wrist. As I said, I think the looks, especially on wrist, are going to polarize. I think some people are going to love the way that looks. Really kind of spacey and, as I said, almost integrated with that kind of big slabby end link there. Drastic taper and then all of those high polished edges. Some people are not going to be as keen on that. I don't think it looks like a 41 because the bezel is quite large and the dial is quite small. It tends to bring that down. And I don't think it wears like a 48 or a 53 in terms of the lug to lug. I think it wears somewhere in between. I've got a seven inch wrist for your reference. You can see there, you can just see the edges of the first link showing. If my wrist was much smaller than that, I think you would probably notice them more. I don't think it would look all that fantastic. If my wrist was a little bigger, it would wear flatter and I think it would probably wear better. I reckon seven and a quarter, seven and a half inch wrist is probably optimal therefore. Let me switch over to my right wrist, which is exactly seven and a quarter inches. Yeah, that I think is just about perfect. It sits just a little bit nicer. The flow from the end link to those first links is better, I think, with a slightly larger wrist. Check the light play. Check out how all those different polished and brushed surfaces react to my studio lights here. And it's the same when I take this one outside in just a minute or two as well. Pretty spectacular, but like I said, not everybody is going to appreciate the look. Overhead legibility is actually all right, despite the fact that it's not a whoppingly large dial. The white filled indices and those gun metal surrounds to them just give a nice bit of contrast against that kind of mid-gray beige Spitfire dial, I think. Outside natural light, I think the watch looks great. All those mixture of brushed and high polished surfaces really playing off each other nicely. And there's clearly enough anti-reflective undercoating on the box sapphire crystal, meaning legibility is not an issue even in brighter light conditions. And on wrist, you really do feel like you're wearing something special. I think the bracelet is the main reason for that. It is very nice indeed. Lots of different facets to it lots of different ways that it reacts to the light. They even put a high polished edge to the clasp, again linking with the high polished edge to the bracelet and those aggressive high polished edges to the lugs. And looking down the wrist, 13 millimeters is not actually too bad for an automatic chronograph. I've seen much thicker than that, especially considering that two mil is from that top hat sapphire. And the pocket shot here to finish, a little bit more flecto evident, but as this one does have that retro futuristic Flieger thing happening, I don't think that's a problem. And once again, you can see all of those different surfaces reacting differently to the light. On to the moans and niggles section then. Four words that strike fear into the heart of even the toughest watch. 
One thing I'm not going to complain about today is the price. I think 1400 to 1600 is actually all right for what you're getting here, considering the steel is coated, considering that is an elaborate grade 28.942. Those are about $400 each, I think, but somewhere between 400 and 500 anyway. All those interesting dials, clearly pumped full of loom, unique bracelet, no off-the-shelf parts here at all. I think that is perfectly reasonable. And because it's a Zelos, you know it is going to hold its value better than just about anything this side of a Rolex. That's not to say, though, that I don't have other complaints. Can you guess what the first one is? It's the same thing I complain about in every single Zelos review, but it doesn't seem to make a blind bit of difference the one year warranty. I think two years should be industry standard for micro brands. Anything more than two years gets a thumbs up from me. Anything less than two years gets a thumbs down from me. But like I said, nobody cares. Zelos haven't changed it and it hasn't stopped people buying the things. I have one complaint specific to this Spitfire dial version and that is that the chrono hand doesn't quite line up with the triangle. I've tried to reset it a couple of times to no avail, yet yeah, that's not amazing. And as lovely as automatic chronographs are, why not release a Mecha Quartz in tandem with this? I'm sure they could have found some VH64, VH63, the right combination of layouts and dates to give people a more affordable option coming in perhaps at around half the price of these. That would still have been a fantastic watch even at 7750 especially if they continued that range of dials but in a cheaper movement version aimed at people who still wanted to treat themselves, but also wanted to have money left over to buy the kids more toys. I guess my big complaint about the Zelo Starfighter pertains to the clasp. I've seen this clasp or this style of clasp anyway on several Zelos now, including those swordfish and makos that I referenced in the introduction. Now, on a $400 to $500 watch, I think it is a bit of a boon. On a $1,400 to $1,600 watch, I think it could be better. Not only is it a bit bulky for this particular model, I mean, look how slim and elegant the bracelet is, compared to a slightly overly chunky clasp. Perhaps they could have gone for something simpler in this case, or perhaps they could have gone for something slightly more upscale. I'm not sure that this one is in it for the long haul either. It's got that ratcheting mechanism, but if you release it, oh, it's a bit stiff, and this one doesn't really know what's going on. It clips in sometimes, it doesn't clip in other times. Yeah, I'm not convinced that the clasp is going to last as long as the watch. And considering this watch is pushing above $1,500 if you go for some of the exotic dials, I think maybe it's time Elshan designed something a little bit more upmarket for his upmarket models. I can't help but reference the clasp on the Halios Fairwind that I reviewed six, seven months ago now. That was an $800 watch and the clasp was sensational. Circular logo. You depress the circular logo, you can adjust the clasp. Not only was it beautiful to look at, but it was practical in operation as well. Circular logo, push button on the fly adjust, I can see it now. Elshan, that is your challenge for 2022, that and to double your warranty period. And 22 mil lug width works well on the bracelet. I don't think it works as well when you get it off the bracelet. This is a Zelos Horween from my Sky Raider. I think it looks a little bit big, a little bit thick because of those extra two mil. Doesn't sound a lot, but yeah, I think it would have looked better on 20 rather than 22. So again, something for you to consider. If you intend to buy this one and then put it on a plethora of straps, yeah, doesn't look quite as good as the bracelet, I don't think. But overall, this is a cracking chronograph and one that I'm sure will have no trouble selling out despite the slightly unfortunate Christmas launch date. There are enough unique features and facets to this one to keep you coming back for more and more and more long after that initial honeymoon glow has ended. So there you have it. Well done for making it all the way to the back end of the video. Really interestingly styled watch this one. One that I'm sure is going to split opinion in the comments section, but such small numbers of each model are being made, I'm sure they'll have no problem finding homes after Christmas. Where's the Mecha Quartz version though? I would love to have seen a more economically viable version of this for those who cannot afford to drop 1500 on themselves rather than their kids. If you're into Zelos as a brand, why not check out a couple of my favourites, the Swordfish and the Mako, both in titanium. Thanks for watching.